This is supposed to be the first, uh, well, it's the first daily news for for 2026 Blue TV. It's a terrible start, although I did manage to get the clock underneath here. Um, got Scott with me and Janine in the background, and they actually, well, Janine thought we were going to do this tomorrow. Um, and maybe we were, but I woke up this morning and decided we were going to do it today. Um, and the reason we're doing this and yeah, I'm looking at what's going on uh, with chat here. I'm going to be paying attention to chat. The reason we're doing this is because we have to. Because we need a daily news program that recaps what's going on in the world uh, in an uncensored and unbiased way and talk about what happened uh, the day before. Uh, all of the other establishment candidates have news stations that are paid for by them, that work for them, that broadcast daily news that is skewed in their direction. Uh, hi. Hi, simple girl. So, uh, yeah, I've got chat over here. We've got things over here. Uh, hey, Scott, how you doing? Unmute if you can. Gosh, I hope everybody can hear me. Let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about things. Give me one second. I'll pull the clock off here. Like I said, this is going to be rough. Uh, the the idea behind this was to uh, be able to do this without really a lot of help because I, I don't know who we're going to have to rely on on a daily basis uh, to do this and, and have a lot of volunteers. But the truth is it has to be done on a daily basis. We are in a war. We are in a war uh, against the establishment. And uh, if you missed it, not framed very well. There we go. We had the uh, fourth debate last night, four out of six, which is a very, very sad low number of debates. Although I think at this point, um, where's Jeff? Jeff, oh, Jeff. I think at this point, um, the the the, uh, the establishment uh, is not really interested in uh, debating against Bernie anymore. I think uh, Bernie has proven that what happens when you tell the truth uh, is you win, and we're not we're done uh, uh, with the BS coming out of uh, Hillary and all of the other candidates and. Um, uh, let's let's just take a look at some of the results. I thought it was uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. Last night, let's pull this up here. Um, if you do the hashtag Dem Debate, which is what we're going to look at here, uh, last night it was very interesting. Last night it was all Bernie, 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 and the first ad that I could see, or the first I'm sorry, the big headline up there. This one, this one, this morning, Clinton put Sanders on defensive. I'm not sure what they're talking about there, but I know they had to do their best to skew it towards Hillary uh, because it was dominated by Bernie Sanders last night. Now, if you look at the hashtag, so yeah, this is the hashtag uh, debate winner. Now we see uh, a little better information. So 
the winner of the first hour, we showed this last night uh, in the afterburn, a uh, focus group uh, on Politico shows uh, Bernie Sanders by a landslide. Now, it wasn't a large focus group, but they're, the, the polls that they do aren't large polls either. So uh, Bernie Sanders by a landslide. The political poll, uh, Bernie Sanders, 70 percent. Uh, the Boston Globe, Bernie Sanders, 77 percent. Uh, NPR politics, Bernie Sanders, 73 percent. I don't even know who this other poll is by, but he's got 94 percent. So I don't when, when I hear mainstream media say Hillary's got Bernie on the defense. When I hear mainstream media say Hillary commanded, you know, there's been articles that say she did great in the debate. What she did was get mad. What she did was have to face the fact that you cannot be an establishment politician today and lie. And I got to say this. I don't understand anybody who's looking at Hillary attacking Bernie on health care, attacking Bernie on gun. Please, please have the capacity, have the neural capacity to look above that and go, are you serious? Are you effing serious? You are attacking him on these two issues where he has had to change his mind. He has had to make different decisions because of how screwed up both of these things are. Let's look at your record, Hillary. Let's look at the fact that when you started talking about health care and you tried to do single payer way, way back in the early 90s, you got paid off by pharmaceutical companies and insurance companies. You took massive amounts of money and then all of a sudden you weren't interested in pushing that anymore. That's not flip-flopping. That's basically taking a payment to stop pushing an issue that the people want. When you, when you look at something like guns, which in my personal opinion, I don't know why we need all these weapons. The, the point, the, the reason we in America are so obsessed with weapons is because groups like the, the, the NRA make it seem like we have to have them. We're, uh, we're the Wild West. Everybody's got to walk around gunslinging and just shooting at everybody. And I don't, know, I don't know what they think we are, but I would rather see a more evolved nation that focuses around education and science. And believe it or not, when you have an educated populace that has their basic needs met, food, shelter, education, water, those basic things, nobody runs around doing a lot of shooting. The Wild West disappears. That's called civilization. And we don't really have civilization in America anymore. We have pockets of rich people, and we have the rest of us. And the rich people are trying to convince us that we need the Wild West. Uh, <laughs> I like that, yeah. She keeps digging that hole. She does. Uh, uh, there are so many things that Hillary will regret saying last night. She keeps digging a hole. She absolutely does. She was doing everything she could to try to make herself look better. And I think it was a pretty sad, pretty sad thing. Um, but, but the guns, the, the guns and the health care, really, seriously, Hillary keeps saying, oh, go back and look at Bernie's record on this and that. Let's look at your record, Hillary Clinton. Let's look at your record. It's pretty bad. It's really bad. I'm sorry. There's a very simple way to determine a, between a politician who wants to work for the 99% and a politician who doesn't. Who are they taking money from? You take money from corporations, Hillary. You take money from all of the people that we're trying to take down. There is nothing you can say, Hillary Clinton, that is going to make me think that you are working for the people. Your history proves you all. says you are not. So, Scott, do you have anything you want to say on that? Even in here? Yeah, both on health care and on guns. Yes. Um, in 93, when she gets credit by the media all the time for pushing single payer, that commission didn't put out a single payer plan. It, it was pretty similar to Obama. It was there was a mandate, but would people have still been able to afford it and and everything else, so I don't think it would have gotten to to a hundred percent covered like she claims she's and she thinks that she can do with Obamacare now. That we're just going to improve on it, and everyone's going to be able to afford it. And I don't know. I'm sitting here in the hospital room, <laughs> and I'm worried that I'm going to lose my health care right if I don't pay the hospital portion of the bill. That right, my and so there's a lot of flaws with Obamacare. And under Bernie's Medicare for All, I wouldn't have to worry about any of that. It would just go to the doctor, go to the hospital, and everything's paid for. It would come up. I, of course, taxes will go up, but 
it'll be more than offset by not having to pay the premiums and the that's it. You got it. You nailed it right there. You got it right there. The she's arguing. Oh, taxes will go up. It's going to cost more. You're going to gut Obamacare. I don't know where in the world he said that. And and uh, uh, she's making shit up. And the, the the articles in the news today say that that Hillary basically made a bogus claim that Bernie is or that uh, yeah that Bernie is going to gut the existing systems to to replace it with his new one. He never said that. He made it. <laughs> the guy helped write Obamacare. You really think he's going to rip it up? What we're trying to do is actually make it the robust bill it was supposed to be in the first place. But the GOP made certain that Obamacare was this thin, messed up piece of shit by the time they were done with it. No offense, but all the work on this giant Obamacare basically made it worthless to me. I'm not even on it. I'm not covered it because I don't have a job. And I understand, Scott, that you know, you know, you've got to worry about it. You've got health care. You're worried about where, what happens with that. I want health care that makes sense. I will not sign up for any health care until I know that it's free from corporate bullshit. And Obamacare is packed full of corporate bullshit. So I'm waiting for a better one. I'm waiting for a better way. I'm waiting to get the greed and the profit completely out of our health care system. It doesn't belong there. It's 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 morally and ethical, ethically sad. That it, that it is in there, it, it's it's just, and, and for all of you, all of you out there, and this is what makes me the maddest, every single one of you white folk wearing suits and ties and going to church and collecting your millions at the 1%, you are not Christian. Every time you make that statement, I'm a good Christian and I'm a white man and I'm making my big money and I certainly don't want affordable health care for the rest of the world, you're a hypocrite. You're, you have no idea what the word Christian means, and it's disgusting. So, uh, you know, anybody who doesn't recognize those that complete incongruency there between calling yourself a Christian and denying health care to everyone on this planet, you are a hypocrite and a liar. And I say that to every single person out there who believes and calls themselves a good Christian. So uh, that's, that's the vast majority of the Republican right. That's the vast majority of the good, upstanding, establishment politician Democrats, too, who all have to call themselves some kind of good Christian religion. Right? You're all hypocrites. Hypocrites. You've got decades to take care of our soldiers. Decades to take care of all of us. We have been waiting for you, the government, to evolve. But what you've been doing is making money off of us. So many times over, it's sickening. It's sickening. And nobody should buy in when they say universal health care. That I see people on the line saying that Hillary, well, how can she argue against universal health care when she's supported in the past? They say universal health care, but her plan, Edward's plan, Bradley's plan, none of them were really universal health care. Right. Right. Here's and, and, and this is great. Uh, uh, the Boom One, uh, the Boom One pushed this up for us. He's one of our volunteers. But this has been going around. Bernie's, Bernie's side eye. I love that. He, he, the, I'm, I'm very sad because I was doing the production last night and I was watching everybody else in the background. Just Janine was ready to rip her TV out of uh, and just throw it across the room. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> it was. It was awesome, though. I mean, I didn't get to hear everything you said, but I could hear the reactions and I, got, I could see the reactions. It was fantastic. And, and I don't... Uh, on the defensive, I don't think so. Um, it was so nice just to catch a politician standing there with courage and balls and saying, no, I'm sorry. You're so full of shit. It was great. It was really great. And, and uh, uh, the only other thing is that it, 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 I didn't realize Andrea Mitchell, and her, she's married to Alan Greenspan, and nobody thought that was a conflict of interest? Really? Hmm. All right. Maybe I'm just late on that. That one gets the side eye from me. Well, you got to remember that the last debate we had George Stephanopoulos as the he wasn't on the stage, but he was moderating the the overall broadcast. Interesting on ABC, and he's even been caught already in this having donated to Hillary during this campaign. <laughs> That's that's uh, that's so hard for me because uh, I used to be a big 
Dem supporter. I used to be a party supporter. And I was I, I would have voted for Hillary four years ago had Barack not been there. I would have voted for Hillary eight years ago had Barack not been there. Uh, until I woke up and, and, and pulled the head out and realized that uh, they're both both parties have no interest in in, in, in us. Um, uh, yeah, so that's here's it, well, it's, it shouldn't be hard for you because at least you're up front about where you're standing. He's trying to say that he's in the middle and doesn't have not taking sides. It, they're well, what Fox used to call fair and balanced. ABC probably thinks they're that too. And <laughs> yes. yes, they just fair don't admit it. You just hide it. It's you, you can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. You work for a media network. You, you, you are a corporate media network. You're not fair and balanced. You don't have to be. By law, you no longer have to be. Reagan made certain of that. The fairness doctrine was, was removed in 1987, and that said you had to be fair and balanced. That said you had to tell the truth. Now you don't. And then when we instituted the, the Telecommunications Act, thank you, Clinton administration, in 1996, we said now you can lie and make up shit about political content. Those two things right there. Nobody talks about them. There's articles out all over the place on independent media. But those two things right there, let's get rid of the fairness doctrine so that our news can lie. And then let's add the telecom act so that our news can lie about politics. What a great thing to do to this country and our democracy. And the only reason it was done was money. The Congress people that's, that did that legislation made money. The cable companies that loved that legislation made money. The news corps... That's, please, we're tired of actually having to have integrity and ethics and tell the truth and be unbalanced or be balanced. They, they said, we don't want that. We've got good money on these candidates. We'd really rather push the information on these candidates. We'd really rather slant the news, these candidates. Screw the American public. Screw the fact that we were supposed to have a, a we had an agreement with them at the beginning of the television era way back when that said, if you're going to use the airwaves across America, you're going to do it with integrity. You're going to spend some time each day telling the American people the truth. And in 1987, Ronald Reagan said, fuck the truth. Our Congress said, fuck the truth. It's so much more profitable to make shit up. It's so much more profitable to spin the truth. And then they realized in 96, holy shit, we can make a ton of money if we turn our political content into Super Bowls, into entertainment. We'll just make it like the American pageants. It really doesn't matter what anybody's saying. All that matters is it looks good, it's sparkly, and everybody's up there, and we have good ratings, and we can pack it full of commercials for our sponsors. Those two things right there probably did more damage to our democracy than anything else. So, thank you very much, cable companies. I don't even know what the hell I was talking about, Scott. I'm just pissed off about that. We're going to talk about this. I love this. And while we're looking at that, I'm going to read what's going on in comments. Yes, I agree. Pulling Chelsea out was very, very weird. <laughs> yes, the only thing that is equally distributed, cynical girl, is the corruption of both parties. I absolutely agree. This, though, is an article by H.A. Goodman, 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 a uh, friend of ours, and uh, he writes a lot of really good articles about Bernie Sanders. There's very few people doing this. Bernie Sanders will win Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina. Here's why. And I'm just going to read the first paragraph he's got here because it kind of lays it out pretty hard. We got a phone call, Scott. By the way, everybody, Scott is with us, a volunteer, and he is in the hospital. He is in the hospital with us online right now, helping us because he's got more information on this stuff than I do. Oh, a long story. Hey. Uh, here's the first paragraph. Bernie Sanders will win the first four contests of the 2016 Democratic primary for the same reasons he won the endorsements of 170 economists, MoveOn.org, and The Nation. Furthermore, Sanders dominated the latest Democratic debate because he's never had to evolve from a conservative vantage point towards a progressive stance. Hillary Clinton voted for the Iraq War, calling it a mistake, pushed for the Trans-Pacific Partnership 45 times recently supported sending U.S. ground troops to fight ISIS, and accepted money from prison lobbyists. Hey there! She accepts money from prison lobbyists. Well, while she's sitting there trying to pick on Bernie for having to review a difficult bill, 
and making up shit about his health care plans, she voted for the TPP 45 times and took money from prison lobbyists and pharmaceutical lobbyists and insurance lobbyists and Goldman Sachs who pays her to go speak places. Who in the world is voting for Hillary Clinton? I want to know who you are. You are un-American. I'm sorry, I'm just going to call it like I see it. There's no reason to vote for Hillary Clinton. She is not interested in helping the American people. Hillary Clinton is an old-school establishment politician. There are two royal families in this country, the Bushes and the Clintons. If we put either one of those royal families back in office, those royal families are going to do whatever the hell they please, because that's what royal families do. They don't consider themselves beholding to the people. They're royal. And the Clintons and the Bushes have had royal treatment from our Congress for decades. And we, the people, the little peasants, we need to rise and get these kings and queens out of our government. If you're voting for an establishment politician, you are destroying this country. Hi, what's up? I was just going to say, it gets me so angry as a woman when I hear anybody say that they're going to vote for Hillary because she's a woman. Because that is such, uh, it, it, to me it feels like a slap in the face, you know, to vote for someone just because they're a woman. It's like, vote for the person who's going to do the most for me, not the one who happens to have the same anatomy. Yep. Absolutely agreed. And, and uh, I realize, I'm just going to say this, are you offended by the fact that some people like myself might suggest that women might be voting simply from their vaginas? Does that offend you? No, I, I, I mean, the thing of it is, is like, if you if you are basing a vote on who to run the country based on something like that, then it you know it makes me want to like just chuck you and just you know say, please don't vote that way. Please vote for the person who's the best candidate. Well, you know? yeah, I, I guess I guess I read an article the other day where um, it was a woman who was saying, you know, stop insulting me and saying that I'm voting with my vagina if I'm going to support Hillary Clinton. <laughs> my question is, then what are you voting with? Is it your wallet? What, 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 what is making you think? If you're, if you're saying, I'm an independent woman and I can think for myself and I'm going to choose Hillary Clinton, it's not because she's just got a vagina like me. What is it? I want to hear from people in the audience. We always get Trump the other thing we got, uh, I was going to say, the other thing that I hear is that it's her turn, which is even more infuriating than I'm voting for her because she's a woman. Uh, it's, it's her turn implies bloodline and royalty. You know, it's nobody's turn here. I mean, it's not her turn. It would have been her turn if she had been the candidate to actually represent the people. There are no turns. Yeah. You know, just because you've been running doesn't mean you're automatically guaranteed to be the president after, you know, a certain amount of time. We vote for the who, who is the best person, not whose turn it is. Well, we're supposed to. But yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a sad thing to say. It's, it's a divisiveness. It's, it's only put out there to divide us. Right. It's, it's not. You know, this is all. This is all part of MSM putting this out to, to the light. And I would vote. I I would love to have a woman president. I want it to be the right woman. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I I, I absolutely agree. And uh, unfortunately, I do not think Hillary Clinton is the right. Um, I I want a woman in office who has a woman's perspective. Which, in my personal opinion, and this is solely my personal woman, women bring a perspective that is badly needed to our government because men have a tendency to bring in that dick swinging macho and we just don't need any more of that in our government we've had dick swinging macho for decades and it's time we brought in some sensitive compassion empathetic intelligence and i think that's going to come more from women no offense men but you kind of run this country like a goddamn dictatorship military camp we're a big military it's all we are you and, and, and it's the men that have done this. So I want men out of our government and women in our government because women have a tendency to focus on more rational, reasonable things like education and uh, health care and kindness towards all, not what countries are going to take over, how many weapons can we build, and who can we beat up next. And 
to me that, and like I said, that's my personal opinion on that, that, that this is how men and women, uh, rule countries differently. And, uh, our government has chosen to rule our country like an oligarchy, like it is, uh, under a bunch of dick swinging men. And it's time we brought in some intelligent women to that. Hillary is not the right one because my opinion is she thinks like a man. She thinks like a dick swinging gun toting man. And I don't want that in my, my government. Uh, and that's again, personal opinion, per total personal opinion. There's no, it's just it's the way I see things. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, <laughs> and when we talk about personal opinion, I'm going to bring this up. This is the time poll for, uh, the debate last night. I, I, I had to bring this up, Janine, not because of the result. Okay. And the result is the same that we see across all polls. The result is the same as we've seen across all of the polls online, uh, is that Bernie Sanders won the debate, uh, hands down. I wasn't surprised at the time poll result. What I was surprised about was the little, um, little disclaimer that they've got above here. And maybe I missed this before, but I think this is very interesting and very telling of MSM. They're, they're doing their best to discredit online information. They're doing their best to let everybody know that just because the people, <laughs> human beings, are voting online, it doesn't indicate who's going to win at all. That their ancient, landline, very skewed polls are much better indicators than our internet, direct, real-time connection between human and the poll. I'm not sure who they think they're fooling. Maybe only people old enough to not really understand how the internet works. But here's what they say. A disclaimer. Online reader polls like this one are not statistically representative of eligible primary voters. They are a measure, however imprecise, of which candidates have the most energized online supporters or most social media savvy fan base. Really? After all, what they are counting is the number of internet devices controlled by people who want to vote. No, they're counting people! That's how it works today in the 21st century time. The internet is where the people are. The internet is a more accurate representation of what's going on in society, not your ancient one-way broadcast network, okay? not your skewed BS poll. Hey, Nate Silver, I think you're a cool guy, but whatever BS you push into that to make it look like Hillary's going to win, you're just getting paid to do that. I don't trust or believe any of your numbers, and the people that do are just more main MSM students. All right. I'm going to trust 50,000 people at a rally. I'm going to trust 5, 10, 20, 30,000 people at rallies across the freaking country. I'm going to trust what I've seen with my eyeballs. I'm going to trust the incredible amount of activity all across the web. Not your ancient lockdown skewed polls that have been designed for decades to put the person you guys want in office. We're done with the games. We're done with the bullshit. And Time Magazine, you can tell me all you want that this poll is not indicative of reality, and I can tell you what it is indicative of is the people. This is what the people want. So if our government was actually listening to the people, Bernie Sanders would already be in office. But it's the opposite of what they want, because our government no longer works for the people. What does anybody else have to say about that? I'm reading comments here, and I'm just going to leave that up. Scott, Jean, anything? Just reading, uh, Eddie posted that the, um, what was it? The Washington Post has declared a winner of the debate, and they say that Sanders won. The runner up was O'Malley, and the loser was Clinton. <laughs> runner up was O'Malley? I, I guess, according to what Eddie just posted, so, uh, oh, <laughs> I find that awesome. kind of funny. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that. Uh, that is awesome. So here, here's it, the next thing. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Jimmy. What? No, I was going to say, um, I, I think it was um, Zachary in the chat room said, um, we're talking about the poll results online. He uh, said, I'm 15 and I voted for Bernie. Uh, so that, that's a good point that, you know, we, they might be polling some people who aren't necessarily eligible to vote, but uh, right. I think it's still fairly accurate. It's, we have to stop looking at it. We can look at voter loss too. Uh, we have to, the, the whole populace counts. The whole populace counts now because we all have a voice on the internet. And that's something they're trying to stop. That's something they don't want. Our government never wanted us to have a voice, never wanted us to be able to organize like this. It, it actually puts us back in control. 
And that is the last thing on earth they want is for us to actually have control of our government the way it's supposed to be. That whole representative government thing that doesn't really represent us. Citizens United gave them the freedom to represent whoever the fuck they want. Every corporation they want. That's why we have to get it repealed, and that's why it won't be repealed by our corrupt government. Mm -hmm. here's, here's what, Jean? No, sorry, I don't mean to tell you. Oh, no, I, I was... Um I was just saying uh, to some people in chat yesterday that I think the uh, the whole thing with the the lack of debates and the uh, the fact that they're so hidden is now going to help Bernie as yep. he becomes the front runner. Uh, Hillary is not going to, or O'Malley for that matter are not going to have a chance to uh, debate in front of the world uh, or at least our country anyway. And uh, yep. and now it's going to hurt them. So. Uh, I guess we should thank them for, right. you know. Okay. I don't think they thought Bernie was going to be the front runner, so. They did not, they completely underestimated how pissed off the people are. That's really what it is, right? Because I don't think they realized that enough people were going to get together fast enough to really make the movement happen. And yes, we're all like amazed Bernie showed up, and I mean, I'm like, wow, he's, uh, 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 what, what was it, the other meme that was, you know, offensive to religious people, I'm sure, that said, uh, you know, please, can we take a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior, Bernie Sanders? Well, I'm not a, I don't believe in religion. As far as I'm concerned, Bernie Sanders is my Lord and Savior, um, because I'm hoping that he pulls this country out of the shithole that it's in. Um, let's take a look at this. This is the other news today. I just have to show this up. I, I know we're not supposed to talk about Trump. But I laugh when I see shit like this. Liberty University, and Trump's going to go to Liberty University because now what Trump is doing is writing on Bernie's media success. He's not stupid. He sees that Bernie is the fireball, and he knows that to keep himself alive, he's got to talk about the fireball, which is Bernie. So now he's going to go to Liberty and do the same kind of crap that, that all the other right-wing candidates do. They go there and they're going to talk Christian. I w I'm interested to hear what he has to say there because he certainly doesn't... I, I, I want to hear what they have to say to him. You know? L Liberty University is an interesting place because it, it, it is the pinnacle of hypocritical Christian belief. And Trump is the pinnacle of hip being a hypocrite. And a piece of shit. So should be an interesting place for me to go, but I, I found that was, you know, like, hey, this has got a trend here that Trump's going to go to Liberty University. Makes me, makes me want to do that. It's just that look right there. I love the side eye. It was, I didn't get to see it. This was beautiful when this came up this morning. I was like, oh, yeah. Somebody had put together a compilation of all his different looks because there was so much ball flying <laughs> during the debate that, you know, you can see it in Bernie's face, just like how he wanted to like say, are you kidding me? Or, but yeah. he is so gracious, and that's why we love him, is, you know, because he, he won't, you know, it seemed like he, I mean, he's obviously presidential, and he's trying to, um, you know, show people how great he is for the country and stuff like that. But at the same time, just looking at that little side eye and some of the other phases he made, you could tell he yeah. was just like, really? Because at the end of the day, he is being so much more gracious. And and I'm sure he just wants to throttle her. I do. You know, it's, 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 he's, he, is, he is doing everything he can to make sure he stays above board, and I really respect him for that. But we, we don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially when she distorts, you know, things that he's said or done in the past, you know, saying that he wants to throw out, you know, Obamacare, something that he helped write. I mean, yes. I, me personally, I, I, I would be so angry, <laughs> but he's so gracious about it. Exactly. How dare you tell me what I'm doing with something I wrote, you know, or helped to write it. It's, it's, yeah. How dare you misconstrue it? Well, that, but that's what they do. I mean, that's, that's what they do. I was impressed that O'Malley really didn't go that way, but I think a lot of people were saying that he was vying for the deep job with Bernie last night. Would you agree with that? Uh, it could be, although he's not my choice. But, um, yeah, I'd rather see Elizabeth Warren or Nina Turner in that role. But Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
was just the uh, angel. My man Chuck Todd almost fell off his chair when he saw the map painted in purple showing for his hands. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was just, I don't know if they expected that. And I have to laugh about uh, Zachary's comment there because I did see that video of Bernie running. Yeah. At the subway. And that's so great. <laughs> did you see the video? It's just a, a quick line. No, but, uh, I, I haven't seen the, the Bernie subway thing, though. Somebody filming in the, in the subway or wherever it was, uh, Bernie's coming down an escalator, and when he gets off the escalator, he starts running to get to wherever he has to go. Oh, yeah. seriously? <laughs> yeah. No, I haven't seen it. But, but, look, anybody who's really... I don't even know why they're bringing up age. They never really brought up age before. Right? Reagan was ancient. Reagan was freaking ancient. So I don't know bringing up age here. You know? And as far as mental faculties, Bernie's got him in spades. I think Bernie runs circles around everybody else. It's obvious by the way he debates. So anybody who's doubting his health, I'm sorry, you're just making shit up. Has, has Hillary released her medical records? Well, I saw something the other day about, uh, that's Flint Water, I bring that up, uh, about her releasing a note that says uh, that they removed a tumor out of her head or something like that, caught it in time. And uh, I don't know what the deal is with that. But, uh, you know, why is health even an issue? Anybody remember FDR? Anybody know what his condition was? They hid that from the country. He ran the government like that. So I really don't think health should even be brought up. This is bullshit. This is not even important. Well, if the person dies in office, you want to make sure that you have at least a decent VP. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I mean... True. I can understand the need for wanting to know whether or not you're, the person is, is healthy enough to serve. But, uh, you know, at the same, at the same time, like, don't make, don't spread these rumors about, you know, oh, Bernie's not releasing his medical records, you know, and then make it seem like, you know, there's something wrong with him. That's why he's not releasing them, you know? Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. It's low. Yes, it is just a low blow. And, and, and what the, the thing that sucks about that is that as soon as the rumor's out, MSM takes it, spreads it out as quick as they can, like herpes, and makes sure the whole world's seen it. And then we have, to, the, we have to fight it. So when they say, when they make statements like Clinton has Sanders on the defensive, well, yeah, it's because she's been throwing, you know, unsubstantiated attacks at him. And when you're being attacked constantly by mainstream media and people over shit that's not even true, you have to be on the defensive. So it's it's just disgusting. It is just I'm 45 years old and I am disgusted at how corrupt the media is and how corrupt the government. I knew they were corrupt, but jeez, it's just pathetic. And here here's here is a shining example of the corruption across our federal government, the corruption across state and local government. Uh, and I'm going to talk about a, a, a tweet that I saw from uh, that piece of shit Snyder. But first, I just want everybody to understand that this, this is not just happening in Flint. The lead in Flint water is an atrocity, but we have atrocities occurring across our nation. There are earthquakes happening all across the country because of fracking. There is well water that is being poisoned all across the country because of fracking. There is uh, so much damage being done to our country right now. Oak flat. Oak flat, freaking McCain is going to go into sacred Indian land and just devastate it for profit. Is the mainstream media talking about this stuff? No. The only reason they're talking about Flint is because it's gotten so bad in Flint that they had no choice and it's become a political issue. And that's why Hillary dropped a little note about it last night with two minutes to spare in the debate. Absolutely disgusting. Flint should have been a primary target. My, my question about Flint is, hey, federal government, where the fuck have you been? And why aren't you going in there and arresting this man right now? You want to show that you actually have some control over things? Go arrest this piece of shit, Snyder. Uh, his tweet last night pissed me off so bad. His tweet after the, the candidates were kind of ragging on him in the debate, as they should have been. It doesn't do us any good when political candidates call, call out people and names. It doesn't help the Flint water crisis. You know, it sure does, because if they call out your name enough, maybe people will just run down to your office and drag you out by the street and just toss you out, because that's what needs to happen with white-collar criminals like you. You are no different than the Nazis 
You are a piece of shit. And if more white collar people who do atrocities against this nation were actually booked and tossed in jail and left to general pop, we would have a lot less corruption in this country. We'd certainly have a lot less white collar crime. But people like Snyder are protected by the Koch brothers. He's got money up the butt because they take care of him and because they rule the world in our government, they'll make sure he doesn't get prosecuted. He'll probably end up with another job in government somewhere else. It's kind of what the Catholic Church did with their priests that were pedophiles. Well, just take them out of here, stick them over here, nobody will know. This is corruption in government. That man should be in prison. Quite frankly, in my opinion, that man should be shot. But, hey, that's just a personal opinion. I'm not advocating it, but Flint, take care of your own. You should drag that man out into the street and just take care of your own because the government has failed you. Your local government failed you, and then your local government screwed you, and then your local government gave you babies that are going to have brain damage. And then the federal government sat around with its thumb up its ass for a year. And then when it became a political issue, they went, oh, shit, now we got to actually act. Calling it a state of emergency is an embarrassment. Our government is in a state of emergency when it takes it this long to act. Our cities have shitty water. Our cities have crumbling infrastructure. Our cities are falling apart because our government spends more than half of its fucking money, our money, on war, on itself, on insurance companies and lobbyists and everybody else, not us. Flint, Michigan is an example of this whole nation and the horror and corruption of our federal and state and local governments. They don't give a shit about us anymore. But we have an opportunity this year to kick people like Rick Snyder out of government, to clean up the corruption. But we can only do that by putting Bernie Sanders and people like him in office. If you're voting for Hillary, you're voting for people like Rick Snyder. You're voting for more corruption. You're voting for water like they have in Flint. Because she's not going to give a shit when she's in office. And we have seen this decade after decade after decade. The establishment does not give a shit. They say one thing and do another. Well, was um, another thing that was kind of infuriating last night at the debate was how Hillary had the cojones to actually say that she made a call to to Flint or to the governor, and within two hours he had already started to, to do something. Like she was the reason that um, they were actually doing something. You know, it, not that all these people have been working on this for a while now. You know, yeah. not you know that. Even Obama had declared a state of emergency, but it was Hillary's phone call that did it. I know. Oh, I saw you. You were so pissed off when she said that. I, I was. <laughs> yeah. The fact that Hillary is taking credit, and they, I saw somebody say this, that uh, uh, Obama won the debate last night because Hillary constantly brought up Obama because she really had nothing else to bring up. So she, she, she kind of rode on his coattails and Kerry's coattails as far as achievements are concerned. Hillary, you didn't do shit in Flint, Michigan. You haven't done shit there at all. You're just trying to pull yourself into the party. I don't know who this thing. You know who's been doing things in Flint, Michigan? Michael Moore. Michael Moore's been in Flint, Michigan. He's been trying to raise the issues there, and he's been doing it for more than a year. One guy, Michael Moore. I'm sure there's other people, other independent radicals that have been trying to do it. But yeah, Hillary, you say that you had anything to do with it? You're full of shit. Full of shit. What, what do you mean? Uh, Flint, Michigan is Michael Moore's hometown, I believe. Right. It's Michael Moore's hometown. That's what a patriot looks like. That is what a real patriot looks like. Somebody that says, this is, this is messed up. We need to fix this. And then a corrupt government is one that turns a blind eye, ignores it. Rick Snyder saved himself some money, put some money in his pocket, and gave brain damage to children. That was his trade-off. And we have people like that all throughout our government. And we've elected them. And it's time to get rid of these people, to eradicate them from our nation, because they do not belong here. Don't need them running our country. Well, come on, John. Businesses need to make money. Who cares if people get sick? Right. I'm sorry. It's profit before people in America. Right? When, when, when capitalism is no longer a, a economic uh, buying and it is your ideology, then you have become a nation of money. And uh, that is what we are. Um, I'm looking at comments now simply because we should. <laughs> I'm reading this. The newly elected Flint mayor is the only reason and the doctors that heard about this one. Did they elect a new mayor? 
Or is he, is he, it's Snyder's the new, Snyder's the mayor, right? The governor. Gov oh, he's the governor. They elected him. Okay, I see this. He's the governor. Well, even worse, he's the governor. Get him the hell out of there. People like him don't need to be in there. Stare at this picture. If you had water like that coming out of your tap, if I had water like that coming out of my tap, I would be down at the Milwaukee City Hall pounding on the goddamn mayor's door going, who the fuck do you think you are? I want my water clean right fucking now. Well, there's all those people who have water that look like that, you know, due to fracking. And has yep. anything been done to stop fracking? No, no. They're pouring all these, you know, chemicals into the ground, into the groundwater, in order to get, you know, natural grass, gas out of the ground. Yeah. And people's water looks like that. They can set it on fire. Yeah. And nothing's being done about that. So people don't care. Or, you know, these corporations and people in our government don't care. Because it comes down to making money. Yeah. It most certainly does. It most certainly does. It's very sad. It's very disgusting. And I'm sorry, Obama, I voted for you twice. I put money into your campaign. You were the first political candidate I, I ever spent money on. Um, I had so much hope for change. But what you turned out to be is just another establishment politician who's got a little better ideas. Um, you, you've done nothing for uh, renewables. I know you're, you're talking big renewables now, but your plan is is not enough. It's not even close. It still panders to the oil industry. Um, the, the fact that you're even allowing fracking in our country is disgusting and sad, and I wish you'd have some balls about that, but I know you've got big friends and big oil, and they're all big friends. Exxon. Exxon. Why have we not tried the CEOs of Exxon, lined them up, shot them? <coughs> Exxon should be tried for crimes against humanity, but where is that being talked about? Where is that being talked about in our in, in, in our, our, our MSM? It was a blip. Oh, Exxon knew. Exxon knew in the 70s that fossil fuels were destroying this planet in the 70s. Why haven't we arrested them? Why hasn't the National Guard gone and taken over the Exxon headquarters? Why have we liquidated that company? If Exxon were owned by ISIS, we would have dropped weapons. We would have dropped nuclear bombs on their headquarters by now. Imagine if, if Exxon was owned by ISIS or OPEC or, you know, you pick any other terrorist country with a Muslim sounding name. And if, it, if, 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 there were, if Exxon were owned by ISIS, if, if BP oil was owned by ISIS, we would have bombed them or taken them over. Set the CIA in there. But no. Because Exxon is the big buddy of Obama and everybody else in there. Oil companies are all big buddies with our with our politicians. So uh, Flint, Michigan is just a, a small example of the atrocities happening across our country. I don't we've got ten minutes left. Um, and uh, thank you for putting up with this first attempt at a news. We're gonna do this every day at nine. And it, it, it's going to get better every day. But the reason we have to do this is because we need to be consistent for a couple of reasons. We need subscribers. Uh, the most powerful thing we can do to help Bernie Sanders uh, on the Internet without really having to do much is subscribe. Subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to Bernie's channel. Get your news from the Internet. Stop looking at MSM. Subscribe to our channel. It helps us out a lot. Engage with us. Um, I will get better at looking at conversation and engaging with you guys. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, if we do this consistently every day, we continue to raise a, a bigger uh, SEO uh, plume of information around uh, Bernie Sanders. It's semantic information. This is important in raising all of the information about Bernie Sanders up on the Internet. And this is how we get it to the top of search. So what we do here and producing a video every day, uh, producing this content to get more people to see what's going on with Bernie is very important. That's why we're doing it. We have, later on today, I believe this starts at, at 4 p.m. my time, 7 p.m. on the East Coast, and Janine uh, says that we all go by East Coast time around the world. So, right, Janine? Well, I do live on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier that way. So tonight, join us for uh, Birmingham, Alabama, Future to Believe in, Ralph. And uh, we will have some fun with that. And then uh, what do we have tomorrow, Janine? I know we got something else. Uh, we we are working on um, covering Bernie from Iowa. He's going back up to Iowa, and he's going to be in Sioux City. So we're working on that. All right. So hopefully we'll be covering that, and we should have. We hopefully we'll have a decent feed. The 
the MLK, the legacy of MLK broadcast, which we did the other day, was actually one of the first where we used the LU-70 unit. And um, obviously we had a little buffering issues with that. We're working that out uh, with uh, uh, the, the tech and live view. But I wanted to make it clear that live view is really being awesome with us and helping us. And the issues that we have are mine. The issues are me trying to piece all these uh, things together with the resources that we have and the, the, the very little funds that we have. And so I apologize to everybody while we try to um, work out these kinks and get it going. But I don't have a million dollars. I don't own a, a big old ass network and, I, and I'm not one of the Koch brothers. So uh, we're doing it with volunteers. We're doing it with uh, what we have, duct tape and safety pins and, and, uh, and making it work. But this is, this, is, this is what a political revolution is about. This is what happens when you have to fight the 1% establishment. This is no different than the French Revolution. This is no different than what happened at the beginning of the 19, uh, 1900s in America. I'm sorry, 20, uh, at the beginning of the 20th century in America. This is, this is, uh, uh, this is, we are repeating history, but this time we're going to win. This time we're going to set things straight because we have the internet, we have us, we're organized, uh, and we know the truth. We can tell the truth from bullshit now, which we haven't been able to do for a long time. So uh, join us tonight. Join us tomorrow. Um, and then Thursday, we have We the People with Portia Bolden. I can show you that card. All of these, all this artwork here has been done recently by Steph. He is a uh, Belgium volunteer. For Bernie 2016 TV, and that should tell you something right there. We have volunteers, people that are supporting Bernie Sanders' campaign around the world. Thank you all. I know I'm sure some of you are here in chat with us. I see uh, Jay Smith, Dave, LH, uh, Angel, Chris, uh, Christian, uh, Cynical Girl, uh, Zachary, uh, E. Williams. I don't know where you're all from. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Hope. Um, this is what makes it happen, guys. This is, this is the difference. Hillary doesn't have this going on. None of the other candidates have this going on. We have this going on. We have people like Portia Bolger. Portia Bolger, who is a grassroots activist, uh, she's been doing this for a long time. She started Women for Bernie Sanders on Twitter, uh, and I can't wait to talk with her uh, next uh, Thursday, this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Every Thursday, we will have politicians that feel the burden. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Portia is next coming up. And join us for that. What else do you need? Anything? Are we uh, are we wrapping? What else? I think Scott's for? back. Yeah, hey, Scott. Sorry, that phone call went longer than I expected. I didn't even know you were still on the phone, man. <laughs> Honestly, I wasn't even wasn't even paying attention. Do you have anything you want to add to anything we've been talking about here? Or you probably been on the phone. Well, back on gun control. Yeah. In earlier in in 2007 and 2008 in debates. She was definitely had the same kind of position on rural and city guns. Because in, in New York City, they had different gun laws in New York State. And, well, actually, a doctor just got here, so I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, man. Thank you, sir. Right. All right, thank you. Take care of yourself. Yeah, we're hoping Scott here recovers uh, all the way, but he's been in okay. hospital. And he was going to be our big. Uh, uh, he was going to be our reporter throughout Iowa and as we travel through the campaign. And, and uh, uh, all right, really appreciate everything. Uh, uh, sorry, Scott, I'm talking about you while you're on the with the doctor. Hey, doctor, we're we're live on air. Um, Scott live from the hospital. I, I'm seeing everybody say thank you in here. We're going to do this every day. It's going to get better. We will have new news tomorrow, new things to talk about, and I was supposed to actually cover the more important stuff at the beginning, which I didn't, so we'll cover this at the end. How do we continue the political revolution? We do that in some very simple ways. The first way is BernieSanders.com. I'm going to pull up the website here, uh, but what we're looking at when we go here is actually a subdomain on this website. Very cool. Um, this is Connect. Dot Bernie Sanders dot com. And this is the community that they have created to get action alerts, stay in touch with what's going on. Um, and I say this very, I want to make this very, very clear to everybody out there in the 99 that has been working on applications or different things or creating communities and different whatever for Bernie. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. And we want as much of this stuff as we can. However, the campaign is trying to unify the effort. 
and we need to all come together in the applications. It doesn't mean you, you have to ditch whatever communities you've got going on for Bernie. It just means we all need to join together on the same page. This is one of those places, connect.berniesanders.com. Go here, log in, get connected with the ground force. This is where the war is being organized, all right? And berniesanders.com, in general, has tons of information. I, I, I just got to say, I'm still waiting for somebody to give me a link to Hillary's plans that are supposedly on her website. So if anybody can drop that link for us anywhere in chat or anywhere during the day, Twitter, whatever, I'd love to see Hillary's actual plans for any of the shit she said last night on her website. And I'd love to compare plans because Bernie gave us some pretty solid facts, figures, numbers, backed by some pretty big-ass experts. So I want to see this plan that Hillary has. I just had to bring that up because this here, Connect with Bernie, is part of Bernie's plan. We got our shit together. So go there. Do this. Sign up. The other thing is... Hey, John, out. before you move yeah. on, yes. um, people, if they do want to see a side-by-side -side comparison, go to the, uh, the website, ifyoulikehillary.com. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that place. That is so sweet. I got to pull that up. Actually, let's pull that up here. We're, we're going to pull that up and show that because that is a sweet website. I like it because it has links to actual uh, votes that were taken and other factual information. So uh, it's a great site. That, this, is, this is beautiful. Um, must be a little busy. It's taking some time to load. There we go. Let me let me uh, expand here so you can see the whole whole gloriousness. This for anybody that is still considering voting for Hillary Clinton, please. If you if you are interested in actually understanding facts and knowledge, if you're that kind of a person, then take a look at ifyoulikehillary.com because everything on here is a side by side. Let's go campaign finance. Boom. Bernie. And Citizens United automatically register people to vote. You can see the differences here. Just just run through the bullet point differences yourself. Okay. Here's the economy. Here's foreign policy. Here's health care. So, despite what Hillary said last night, let's take a look at the actual side by side comparisons here. This is a fantastic site. Absolutely right, Janina. And we should have this up all the time. Um, good call, good call. So we got, if you like Hillary, if you want to actually look at the facts and compare Bernie and Hillary, a great place to send anybody that is claiming to vote for Hillary stuff. We have the Sanders website, Connect with Bernie, that's connect.berniesanders.com. We have the Rally app. It's just the Rally app, but you can go, you can go to gorally.co is the URL, and from there you can learn about the app. See if there's a Coordinate events across the country, discover chats on news, issues, activism, and so much more. Create your own topics and discussions. Hopefully, soon you'll see Bernie 2016 TV content in here. I know we're working on that. So, uh, connect, rally app, and field the burn is the last one. And this one is for canvassing. This one is for canvassing. Fieldtheburn.com. Is going to help you canvassing. A lot of people have already been using this, but those are the tools of the revolution, the tools of the war we have with the establishment. And download these, get connected, get working with them, use them. Uh, this is how we are organizing the war. This is how we are organizing the grass, grassroots. And and I yes, you're absolutely right. I am so sorry. I did not mention. I did not spend any time on MLK. I just see that note in there um, from uh, Jamar, or Jamar 505. Uh, and as I told uh, Eddie last night on pronouncing people's names and stuff, uh, we're not going to be disrespectful. We're not going to say anything about the names, but if we can't pronounce them, we're just going to go with the first name or our best pronunciation of whatever you've got here for you. Um, uh, and, and what you're saying is take some time today and remember Dr. King as well. Yes. I will say this about Martin Luther King. Two things. Here's, here's, here's what I have to say about it and what I saw from comments from people in Twitter yesterday uh, basically talking about where's Bernie's minority support 
And I just want to ask everybody if they did see Bernie sitting down with Killer Mike and Nina Turner and Cornell West talking about Martin Luther King yesterday. So when people say Hillary has the minority vote locked up and Bernie doesn't have support in the South, I say you must be watching mainstream media. You must not be paying attention to the massive number of rallies that Bernie's had with massively diverse crowds in the South. So as far as MLK, Bernie, one of the few people that was actually around when LK, MLK was around, walked with the man. Okay. I'm a white privileged guy. I got nothing to say about Martin Luther King other than being ashamed and, and, and owing uh, every person of color in this nation an apology as a privileged white man. And that is how I feel. And I'm not speaking for all privileged white men, but I don't have anything to say about Martin Luther King because I am ashamed of my nation. I'm ashamed of white people for their continued <coughs> racism. I, I'm, uh, I got nothing to say there other than I'm sorry. And I apologize on behalf of the idiots who run this country that we have not actually dealt with racism in this country. And uh, I hope that we can change that. I hope that my generation and younger recognizes that we just have not moved forward with this. I hope to God that my generation and younger can actually bring about a peaceable world that doesn't hate each other for stupid reasons. That doesn't hate. We should, be hate. we should all be able to communicate with each other today, love each other, and grow a beautiful planet because this one's dying. We've, we've fucked it up. It's time to work together to fix it. MLK was all about that. Right now. So I got nothing, nothing but shame about that. And I, I apologize deeply to, to every person of color. That I just, that's all I got to say. So, I'm sorry. I'd like to add to that that um, I, I think it's I think it's wonderful that we have uh, remembrances of um, MLK, especially you know today we have this holiday, unfortunately, that is not not necessarily recognized. You know, um, a lot of people still have to work, etc. But to me, what would be more meaningful is to actually take what he was trying to do and make those dreams happen rather than just to talk about them and to, you know, save one day a year to, to recognize, you know, him and, and his work. Let's actually try to implement some of the things that he talked about, you know. Um, so that's what I would like to see going forward in, in order to honor, you know, him and, and his work. Um, I did want to mention also when we were talking about um, a lot of people are saying that, uh, you know, South Carolina is Hillary's firewall and all this stuff and Bernie isn't going to be able to do as well. During the, the co-show of the debate, uh, and I can't remember the gentleman's name, but Chuck Todd was talking to, uh, um, I don't know if he was a senator, a congressman, a governor, um, there's an African-American man who was talking about uh, Bernie and his efforts in South Carolina. And Chuck Tad asked him, you know, well, how is Bernie doing down there? And his response was, well, much better than I had thought he was doing. And he said that um, Bernie has got a great ground game going in South Carolina right now. He's doing better than anyone would have expected. And that um, his numbers in the polls will s soon reflect that. Um, yep. So I thought that was a little bit encouraging. That is. That is. I, I, I didn't know that. Um, uh, mainstream media, again, will do everything they can to convince you otherwise. And, and uh, it's really sad. Um, it, what, what's interesting, you know, my dad watches mainstream media. That's not what's sad. He watches mainstream media. But uh, uh, I call him because I get updates. So, Dad, tell me what your perception is of the campaign based on what you're hearing from MSM. And it's always, it always makes me laugh. I'm like, really? Really? Did you know about this? Did you know about this? Did you hear about this? And he laughs too. He's like, no, they didn't talk about any of that stuff. Right? So, 
uh, it's like Janine said, it's it, they're they're having to cover Bernie now. They have no choice. And I'm guessing the accountants are seeing that Bernie is bringing in ratings. So they're going to ship. MSM is now going to flip fun, try to figure out how to make money off Bernie. Right. You know, the problem is they know that, that Bernie isn't interested in pandering to them anymore. So, um, you know, it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it, I don't think, who is it that said it? It was Van, is it Van Jones? I pushed out a Van Jones post. Yeah, uh, Van Jones. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, and I wish I had the exact quote. It's great. It's one of our top uh, posts on Twitter right now. It, it uh, basically said that the Democratic base is, it, it was, this was it, it said, the Democratic base is a full on rebellion against Hillary Clinton. That's what it was. And that's the truth. We are, we're not having it. We're not taking establishment politics this year. None of us are. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's better than you think. Don't pay attention to MSM. Do not stop. We are winning this war. Keep at it, folks. Uh, I think that's it for today. Thank you all for joining us. Anything else, uh, Janine, we need to mention? Phone banking? Still phone banking? Yes, phone bank, please. BernieSanders.com slash phone bank. It's simple. It's easy. Check out our video on our YouTube channel. Um, it's one of the best things that you can do right now to help Bernie. Yeah, that's right. You made a great video. Janine has this great video on there. Um, and shorter than I think the official full campaign video would it help you. Uh, it, it, look, I followed along. I did it. I got in and, and I, I tried phone banking once. I, I, I got to do it again. I, I promise. I'm, I'm a little afraid, but I, I will get over that. I will get over that. Uh, so yes, uh, that's it. I don't know that I'm going to run a, a song for this. This is supposed to be news. And I, and I have my little news tune here, but I don't really know what to show at the end. I don't have credits for things put up here. Just uh, put this up. Thank you all for joining us. We'll do this again tomorrow. Um, maybe it'll be a little smoother. Maybe it won't. We'll have some different information to talk about. But the bottom, I talk about. But the, the bottom line for this is that we do it every day. We come together every day. We talk about what happened the day before. What do we need to do to help the campaign? What's going on? What's coming up? And let's make sure we get the truth out there and separated from the BS and the spin that mainstream media is trying to push. So for us, that means watch this program, subscribe to this program, subscribe to our channel, and share this as much as you can because we are winning the war on the Internet. And, and Clinton and, and the rest of those guys, they have no idea what to do here. But we own this space. 99 owns it. So the more activity we do here, the more we help everybody else. Just going to check in one more time. I see a lot of thank yous here on the comments. Love you guys. I, I, I didn't even expect to have anybody show up. So thank you all so much for this first thing. And we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day. Hi everybody, this is Stefan Molly from Feeding Main Radio. Fine, alright, fine. You want Bernie Saunders. Let's do Bernie Saunders. So this is an examination of the Democratic presidential nominee or guy who wants to become president. Bernie Sanders, a uh, socialist, a Democrat, as he calls himself. We'll unpack all of that as we go forward. But before we start, a little bit of a big picture view.